Hello everyone, my name is Malik L. Train, personal trainer, certified hypnotherapist, also a Reiki master, host of Health Awareness Talk for Sir Broadcast. Here today we have Mr. Fred Jones, former Baltimore Raven, he also presently he's playing a, a semi-pro as well, and he is here to question our panelists over uh, the, what we've been talking about lately, creating the ultimate athlete through Asian medicine and martial practices here today we have uh hello fred how you doing i'm doing great how about yourself oh just fine thank you okay with um herbalist tai chi acupuncturist um instructor teacher mitchell say hello mitchell yeah I'm glad to be here today super tibetan uh tibetan medical qigong expert and also reflects six times reflexologies yadi alaman say hello yadi hey hey Right, super. And also uh Hungar Master teacher from here in Mooresville, um, North Carolina. And also uh he's also a nurse as well. Say hey Rick. Good evening everyone. Okay, super. Okay, now let's go on to you, Fred. Fred, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your career, please? Um yes. Well my name is um Fred Jones. I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan. Um where I play football and I ran track at Pontiac Northern. Um, from there, I went on into play um, football at college with Alabama a and um, I was a running back, receiver, and slot receiver. Um, after that, um, I went into um, the NFL where I was playing with the Baltimore Ravens for three years on the practice squad. Um, from there, I have played with the Georgia Four as far as arena football, and I have played um, semi-pro with the Palm Beach Makos. And currently now I'm playing with the Georgia Canes. So I'm, I'm looking at what I really want to get out of this is some um, preventive medicine to for reoccurring injuries and to prevent injuries as far as when it comes to the MCL and ACL, which is a lot of things that a lot of pro athletes have to deal with and back. Um, I have tried, you know, dry needling um, and different you know, spars and different massages. I have also got into, you know, Taekwondo and Ishin Ru. I have even tried ballet to get the stretching, but it just seems like no matter how much you do, how much weight training you do, there's still um, the injuries. But the biggest thing that a lot of us athletes want to know is what can we do to either speed up the recovery or stop the swelling when we do get um, injuries. Okay, that's super. And we're going to do the show in this order. I know Yadi got probably got more experience being on radio and um, television and everybody. But I'm going to go through for each one of y'all. And um, I just want you to give me a yes or no if you can help them or not. Yadi Alderman, can you, get, can you help Fred? Yes or no? Yadi? Can I help Fred? Yeah, as far Absolutely. as injury prevention and stuff? Absolutely. I okay. Could, yes. All right. We're going and, to... Okay. Right. Okay. Go on to the next one. Rick Panico, can you help? Yes or no? Oh, most certainly, yes. Okay. And Mick, uh, Mitchell, Michael, can you help? <coughs> yes or no? Yeah. Okay. So I definitely. Want, yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to make sure before we go through, you know, that everybody could help Fred because it's no sense going, you don't, you know, there's if you couldn't all right and i know i definitely can too so i'll be the last person all right uh yadi we're going to go ahead and start off with you today because i know you you got a lot of stuff on your plate to be able to share and um uh go ahead and ask your question uh, this is going to be a conversation right now it's like uh 11 11 minutes 18 seconds into this so we're going to go ahead and start with you yadi just go ahead and i'll let you know when to wrap it up uh ask your question again fred Yes, the first question I want to ask is, what is some um, pre-measurements you can do when it comes to injuries? And the biggest problem that a lot of us athletes have is when it comes to uh, uh, stretching for our knees, our back, and our shoulders. Okay, what are some, what are some ways to prevent injury? Yes. Um, okay, the, I'll give a very simple answer. Um, the whole concept that people have of stretching is backwards. Most most stretching is more damaging to the muscle and the connective tissue than is any benefit. 
uh, I was taught by a teacher named Bob Cooley from Boston, who's, who was a yoga instructor for many years until he was hit by a car and almost completely disabled. His, uh, his assistant at the time was actually killed by the same car, and he was trying to rehabilitate himself, and he couldn't do it with yoga, he couldn't do it with massage, he couldn't do it with acupuncture, and he kept trying stretching and stretching, you know, because he wanted to elongate his, his muscles and his connective tissue to, you know, reduce his pain. And he learned a new philosophy in stretching, which is something that's integral in what I do. Your whole idea of stretching would change. The way we stretch involves a whole lot of isometric tension as well as, you know, lengthening and elongation. It's a concept of yin and yang where there's tension and, um, there's tension and lengthening at the same time. So we use contradictory force, and it's a specific kind of stretching that I haven't seen a whole lot of other people do. It's, I have a, a, a video program called uh, Qigong for Strength and Power where I teach the secrets of stretching. And I'll tell you, um, when, you learn, <clears throat> when you learn this kind of stretching, you'll never go back to the other kind of stretching. You can do the same kind of stretches that you're already doing, but when you use it with contradictory force, one, you're not going to get the injuries that you would from normal stretching, and two, you'll find that the muscles actually are strengthening as you're stretching, so you don't have an isolated stretching routine. You can be more efficient with that time. You can start your muscle workout and your stretching workout at the same time. That's Hopefully that answers your question. Okay, for, well, okay, Fred and Yachty, you still have eight minutes. Keep on asking your questions to Yachty, Fred. Okay, I have another question. Now, as far as your quadcep muscle. Now, I know the quadcep muscle has maybe, I think it's like maybe two or, two or three different muscles in that muscle group. Now, um, when you're doing your leg curls or leg extensions, you can see where that where the two that the two bands separate. Now, I tore my quadcep muscle. So, what can I do to prevent that dent that's permanently in my muscle where you actually can see the separation. Huh. Okay. There, there may be some scar tissue, you know, with the tear, which we actually do have a scar tissue uh, therapy that we do. That scar tissue a lot of times is the reason why you don't heal because it just becomes a hard piece of collagen. And that hard collagen is really difficult to get blood flow. And even in our philosophy, we think of blood and chi as the same thing. It's really hard for the, uh, the the central nervous system to get the signals to send the messages to get full range of motion and healing out of that uh, that muscle group. You mentioned the quadriceps. There actually are four muscles, hence the word quad. Uh, there are four muscles in the quadriceps, but ty typically where there's smoke, there's fire. So if there are quadricep issues, there are also going to be hamstring issues because the two work together. When one is long, the other one is short, and vice versa. But we have a scar tissue treatment that we could do and there's a um, there's a strengthening gong that we do specifically for um, you know muscles that have been compromised to support the connective tissue in the joints. So even after you're retired, you can still walk normally, and you're not taking a whole host of painkillers for the rest of your life. Okay, uh, Yadi, what explain to everyone who may not know what is a gong? Gong? Yes. Gong is in you mean the word gong as in gong fu or qi gong? Uh, well, you said you have a gong that can help people develop their uh, tendons or get over the injuries. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. yeah, gong. Uh, there are a lot of different definitions, but we'll call it. There's a skill. Gong sometimes means work or skill. There's a gong specifically. Um, that word gong is a very sacred word. It, it it usually means hard work. You know, it, as in gong fu, or as in qi gong, but it implies that there's some there's some skill and some uh, some work being done. Yeah, but we have a, a specific gong fu for rehabilitating torn muscles and strengthening the connective tissue that attaches the, the muscle to the bone. Okay, got it. So let me get this right on first. Those two questions. It's number one. It's a yes, you do have a program to help to strengthen the tendons and ligaments and stuff to help to prevent uh, injuries, right? Absolutely. And uh, also you have a unique stretching system um, that uh, uh, that's very unique that could help a person to go a lot farther and be a lot more relaxed in their tendons and ligaments uh, than the normal stuff that's out there, right? Right, and to reduce possible stretching injuries, which you see a lot of.
okay and number three on that is is that you can possibly do something about the scar tissue on um his quadriceps correct yep We're, there's a unique therapy that we have a scar relief which i haven't seen a whole lot of uh yet i hope hopefully to get more popular maybe you know my teacher will come down and start teaching at some clinics but absolutely we have a scar release program it's very unique okay what exactly does that scar release um technique uh include is it touching stretching all that what it's well okay that's a good question uh, you can do all the stretching you want you can do all the massage you want scar tissue is not going anywhere it, it, you know it, it's giving you a certain amount of relief but to release a scar i'm going to try to explain this the skin has a natural electrical conductivity they measured this there was some research done in sweden that says our skin has a, a charge of maybe 80 kilohertz it's not a whole lot. A scar, which is a hard piece of collagen, has a charge of 1.5 volts. So what happens when you get a scar tissue is that scar tissue sends out messages to the brain to send neurotransmitters that, that send messages to the muscles that say lock up, protect, protect, protect. And the muscles around the scar will always be hard. And when that happens, you get reduction in blood flow which will mean that the tissues around it aren't getting enough oxygen, and it'll, it'll increase the risk of injury, but also you're already using energy to harden those muscles around the scar. So we, the scar release program uses an electroacupuncture technique where we use, two, uh, we use two devices at the same time to sort of bounce a charge on both sides across the scar, and the scars release, I have a whole lot of photos of people who've had scars for 40 years, and they have all type of problems with, you know, that, wherever the scar is, if it's on the stomach, they have problems with the organs, mm -hmm. they have problems with the joint mm -hmm. there, they have problems with the muscles. When we do scar relief, um, all the electrical problems that I mentioned earlier are resolved, and it's so, um, it, it's so ironic how organic problems like digestion, um, you know, people who have uh, heart issues, lung issues, depending on the location of the scar, those things seem to re resolve just because of the meridian that's crossing the scar. But it's a very unique therapy, and it's not widely known. It's just something I learned about the last year. Super. Do you have any of those? Uh, we're going to be doing one last show next uh, Sunday. Would you have any pictures that you can actually uh, send to us so we can screen them up, while you, uh, put it up on the screen while you talk about this? Sure. Yeah, you're good for that. I'll send them to you via somehow text, email. Okay. All right. That's wonderful. Fred, I, you know, I've been a personal trainer now for almost 20 years. I've never heard anything like that before. Have you? Um, no, I haven't. So this is new to me because a lot of times I have heard that, you know, what you got to do is you have to just strengthen it up by either doing more weight training to strengthen that muscle up. Or they tell you a lot of times to get a deep tissue massage because when you do get an injury and you got scar tissue, that muscle, um, instead of it shrinks and you got to constantly keep stretching it to expand. But I notice the more I stretch it, the more it hurts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's worth the drive to coming down here to Charlotte, North Carolina to meet Yachty to see about that. <laughs> Don't you, Fred? Um, I definitely uh, agree with that totally because I would like to see this in action because if it's going to get me from running that 4-4 to go back to that running that 4-3, I would, I would gladly like to see it because that's the issue that I have that I, I feel that, that glitch when I run that mm -hmm. a lot of times I won't put as much power into it because I'm thinking I'm either going to re-injure that quadcep muscle or my hamstrings are sore. Wow. And y'all uh, say <laughs> Rick and um uh Rick and Michael, do y'all see why I put let Yadi go first? Yes, most certainly. <laughs> yeah. Very, very informative. You know <laughs> what I mean. Yadi is always good for that. Uh Yadi and Fred, y'all still have about two minutes left on the clock. I want you to please ask another question, Fred. I want to hear some more from Yadi. <laughs> Okay, here's now, now here's a here's the one. Why do you know anything about dry needling? I know about dry needling, yeah. Okay, I I'm not injury prone, but with me working out so much and training so hard, they try to give me dry needling for my calf to release the tension because you know how every once in a while your calf muscle you get that knot in it when you do a lot of exercising. Yeah, yeah. They get, 
I had developed a knot there. They tried to give me dry needling. But to me, the dry needling made it worse because when yep. the dry needling went into the muscle, instead of them doing like a deep tissue massage, they actually hit the nerve of that muscle, and the guy didn't realize how strong I was. Yep. And he almost went into the wall. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, I, I only have a couple of minutes, so like, take I'll, as long I'll as me, Yachty. Go ahead. I'll try to make it brief. Dry needling was a procedure I saw when they approved it. They approved it for uh, chiropractors, some physical therapists, and it's a perversion of acupuncture based on trigger point therapy. It's not real acupuncture. Um, of course, you know their, their needling technique is incorrect. Their hands are way too hard. They're not doing acupuncture. It's barbaric. Um, <laughs> cool, you're not the first one, Fred, to tell me like a. I got dry needling and it made it worse. You know, I personally, I'm, I know we have an acupuncturist on the line, and I think if a person knows acupuncture very well, touch that person's hand. It's unique. It's not like everyone else's hand. Their hand is very sensitive. Uh, I don't use needles. I use electrostim. I use lasers. I use electromagnets because anytime you're breaking the skin, you're affecting the blood. And if you really don't know acupuncture, and it, uh, this is why dry needling techniques are, they're starting to phase out, you know, because they're starting to see that more, you know, more stories about people not having good experiences and actually having their injuries get exacerbated. That's not too uncommon. I, I wish that they would stop letting people that don't do acupuncture do acupuncture, you know. <laughs> But that's just my opinion, you know. All right, that's definitely that's super. Okay, uh, Fred, do you have any more questions about um, Tiati? Um, no, not this time. I right. appreciate everything. All right, so thank Fred, you. thank you to Fred. Did you actually learn anything that was of value to you today? Um, yes, that? I did. Um, what I did learned you learn? that because usually with me, I'm averaging. I would usually stretch maybe thirty to forty-five <laughs> minutes before I work out. Mm -hmm. And then I'm actually stretching even after I work out mm -hmm. in the sauna, thinking that's either going to elongate the muscle and it's going to prevent injuries. But I'm realizing just by hearing him saying that I'm doing more damage than good. Yeah. I even yeah. I yeah. even tried um, what is called heated yoga. Mm -hmm. And I realized after that, I was in more pain than I was before I went in. <laughs> okay yeah that is definitely that's absolutely i mean that is that absolutely definitely that's the truth with that so you know yadi uh for anybody who's listening to this segment right now i want you to give your uh, information please how to get in contact with you okay go to google look up yadi y-a-d-i last name alamin a-l-a-m-i-n uh, my website is charlotte reflexology also uh the qigong therapist uh, I won't spell that out. You, you can find me at Charlotte Reflexology. You can contact me at 704-993-8321. I'm open seven days a week, so it, it's not hard to find me. Okay, that's super. And thank you again, Yadi Alleman. Glad to do it. Okay. All right, Fred, um, also another thing. Uh, how much uh, how much uh, essential fatty acids, oils like coconut, flaxseed, and different stuff, um, do you actually intake into your body on a regular basis? Um, that's a good question. I really couldn't tell you. Okay, and the rest <laughs> I, of y'all... Okay, go ahead, Fred. Um, I drink a lot of water. Uh -huh, um, when uh -huh. when I do my protein shakes, it's either with almond milk or coconut water. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, and I use wee bollocks. I, I mean, because with me playing football, different things, I can't have no PEDs or, you know, the C4s, a lot of the pre-workouts, mm -hmm, amino acid mm -hmm. we can't have. It's okay. I'm going to ask you. Yeah. This is something. I'm going to uh, going to ask you. Quick. Are you drinking half your body weight in ounces in water? Yes or no? I don't. Every I, day. I, eh, I drink about four bottles a day, so I don't know how much that could be. So how many? How many? Uh, how many bottles is that ounce? How much? How much bottle is it? Like a cup of water? Two cups of water per? No, second? the regular bottles of water. So what's that? Like uh, uh, eight ounce? Eight ounce. Okay. Bottle, yeah. And how much you weigh? Two fifteen, five ten. Okay, is it five ten to uh two ten? Anybody here see what the problem is straight off the bat? <laughs> oh yeah, deficiency. Okay. 
<laughs> He's not hydrated, okay? He's not hydrated. Warm water intake, right. Ricky, what you think about that, Yachty? Is he hydrated enough? Not at all. Okay, Rick, is he hydrated enough? No, certainly not. Michael, is he hydrated enough? No, he needs to be drinking more. He's drinking what you call it. You take something that's dry and you bend it, what's going to happen to it? Okay. Yeah. It's going to yeah, break, right? <laughs> Half your body weight in ounces. A day? Uh, a day. I do it. Everybody do it. You sweating all that out. You're 210. You about, I'm 225. I'm 5'8", 230 pounds, but you like 5'10", 200 some pounds. You need to drink that water. In other words, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give uh, uh, y Yachty. Give him the spill on water. You got five minutes. Oh, gosh. Okay, so you are 75 to 85% water. Every muscle, every tissue, every nerve, every cell is dependent upon the integrity of the water, the clarity, and the abundance of water in you. So if the water you're drinking is uh, poor, it's the wrong pH, it's too acidic, or it doesn't have enough minerals in it, and you're sweating, you're constantly in deprivation of the most vital substance that you could ever put in your body. You know, protein is very important, uh, minerals are very important, water-soluble vitamins like B and C, those are must-haves, but when the water is deficient in the body, there was a book written a long time ago called Your Body's Many Cries for Water, and the, uh, the author was basically saying that almost every disease that we can think of, from arthritis to uh, heart disease to cancer, comes from a chronic state of dehydration. It's not just the water. It's not just putting any old water. It's putting the kind of quality water, you know, that has the natural minerals, the trace mm -hmm. minerals, mm -hmm. that send those messages across the nerve that really make the body uh, a more ample place for blood to flow through and for you to absorb your, your nutrients. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when I was young, I boxed and I wrestled, and I was just like any other person, and I had pain even in my teen, you know, in my teen years when I got an injury. Whatever they told me, you're going to be out for a few days. I followed those instructions. It was when I got chronically ill that I stopped listening to all the people who gave me instructions because I realized that I was headed on a downward spiral. What, you know, unless you've been through it personally, you really don't know how to fix it. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, I was chronically dehydrated. My lips were constantly dry and cracked. Mm -hmm. I had trouble with digestion. I had no energy. My skin looked terrible. I'm almost 40 now. If you look at pictures of me at 23, I look like an old man then. I'm telling you, there's, a, there's something here to what Malik is saying. That the body, in a, in a constant state of dehydration, there's no way you're going to get that performance out of it. Uh, well, let me put your Fred. Let me tell you why none of the other stuff worked for you. Um, I'm going to tell you the 80% of the reason why none of the other stuff work, working for you. Okay. You're, you're dehydrated. <laughs> <laughs> you're just dehydrated that's why I hate it. nothing the herbs won't work qigong won't work if you're not thinking your body has over 60,000 miles of blood vessels and what runs through those blood vessels is water can you think of a river if it had a very little bit of water in it how stinking and everything would it be you know your body is exactly the same way the tears that you muscle tears that you're going through the pain that you're going chronic pain that you're going through can all be led to dehydration now um my 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 favorite thing is half your body weight in ounces for water fred uh yeah do you have a better formulation for water uh, amount of water persons use by any chance oh wow um okay years ago maybe eight years ago i met a guy from florida who had a machine a little crude machine that he used to put out on his deck and he said it was a hydrogen bubbler and he said the mm. reason why people are dehydrated is because their potential hydrogen is too mm -hmm. low. The pH is too low. The mm -hmm. pH is potential hydrogen. And the word hydrate has more to do with hydrogen than it has to do with the water substance itself. So he you got me drinking this water, and, you know, I tell you, just drinking the kind of water with the, the, uh, the hydrogen gas bubbles into it changes everything. Like, Normally when you drink water, you can almost feel your lips drying out from the inside because the water is pulling electrolytes out of you as you drink it. It's no, it's no good. The kind of water we drink, I, I haven't even had a chance to get some to Malik, but as you drink it, you can feel everything starting to moisturize. You feel your lips getting moist. You feel your tongue getting moist. You can feel the, the, uh, the throat loosen up. I've been, hooked. I've been hooked for the last eight years, and I won't change it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's called new water. 
But um, oh, sorry about that, Yadi. But um, it's on your website. But um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the reason. It was one of the reasons. For either two things, two things. Number one, you dehydrated. Go test. Go when you next time you go to the doctor, check your dehydration level. Okay, that's what I wanted to do. And like I said, I'm a personal trainer, so I'm telling you that's why I started off at the get go about that. And then number two, uh, y- you know, if you put, if you know, if you take a piece of rubber, Fred, you know what rubber is, right, Fred? Yes, I do. Okay, so if you take a piece of rubber, Fred, and it's all dry and everything, and you bend it, what happens? It cracks and it probably breaks, right? So in other words, you're trying to say I'm all I'm all dry and broke up. No, 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 no. But you take the oil. <laughs> you're so funny. But if you take oil and you put it on that same piece of plastic and then you bend it, what happens? It bends with the, it bends with the plastic. It bends with the plastic. So that's why I asked you the question about the oil. Are you taking in enough oils, essential fatty acids, <laughs> flaxseed oil, rose oil? What what other type of oils can you use, uh, Rick? Wow, I'm not an expert on that there. It's okay. You guys Michael, seem to be a little Michael, what type of other oils? That. Michael, what type of other oils he could use? Yeah, good question. I'm not an expert on oils either. I you know the main thing is to have a good diet. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna eat the right foods, um, eat nuts, things like that, you're gonna get some of the oils that you do need. Or, you know, eat fish, stuff like that. That's the, what about, that kind of what stuff about the omega-3 fish oil? There you go. Omega-3 fish oil. Yeah. You know, that's omega-3. Yeah. Yes, a, that's very good. Yes, what that about, is. Go ahead. What about CLAs? Yep, CLAs, perfect. Pull that body fat right off. Okay, I, I, primrose oil. Yachty, what's the other type of oils? Uh, there's an oil most people don't know about. You know, you can count on me for some obscure something that know. nobody knows about. I know. That's um, why I gave the other two a chance first. Go ahead. Okay, there's an oil called aloe vera oil, yes. and I don't mean gel, I mean aloe vera oil. Mm-hmm. This is collected from South Africa because down there the aloe trees are not like little potted plants, they're like the size of evergreen. Mm-hmm. Um, it, the, the aloe vera oil is extremely, it's high in uh, omega-3, 6, and 9, mm-hmm. but we know that aloe vera is anti-inflammatory, so it's a great thing to do just to move things along in the digestive tract and mm-hmm. also to reduce inflammation in the body. Mm, 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 aloe vera oil you can get it on amazon it's not expensive okay that's called uh did you hear that fred he says olive uh olive vera oil is also good for them joints too so you know we're looking i say uh my recommendation well what i say what i you know what i say if i was you fred the very first thing i would do is to do the research on how much water do i need to hydrate myself with and what type of water do I need to hydrate myself with in order to be fully hydrated throughout the entire day, especially during practice, okay? And right. what type of essential fatty acids, what type of oils do I need in my body in order to keep me limber, in order to keep me stretched? For example, you know, it's like I was saying before, you're looking at stretching. Number one, you got to be hydrated. Hydration is going to help you a lot of healing the body. But number two, Fred, if you just take a uh, 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 tendons and ligaments are just like rubber bands. Okay, if you put that oil or what you call it in, you put oils on the plastic on the rubber band, and uh, you know, and it's what's dry, it stretches the way it's supposed to, right? Correct, and it's amazing when I've had people, including <laughs> myself, when we put those oils in our body, you can get a lot more out of your stretching than what you normally uh would. Would anybody disagree with that? Okay, that sounds logical. Okay, I want to make sure because you never know when you when you might learn something new. Believe it or not, I don't know everything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So go ahead, Fred. Whoever's talking, go ahead. Oh no, I said you know a lot, Malik. I do. I, I, you know, I wouldn't have you on. You know, I got you on the show in order to confirm what I'm already thinking. That's why I got y'all three here. Okay, is to you know is to show people like Mr. Uh, NFL Fred Winfrey, you know that there's other modalities that he can utilize, and everybody else they're thinking from an Eastern perspective, Asian medicine and martial practices that you can use to make yourself the best person, the best athlete possible. Also, anyone out there, if you want to call, it's one eight hundred. 792-3443. Again, it's 1-800-792-3443. One more time, 
1-800-792-3443. Like again, we got a, a herbalist. We got an acupuncturist online. We also got a guy who, uh, Mr. Rick here, he's Hungar. He deals with the tendon, um, tendon ligament development. And we also got Tibetan Qigong and also Reflexology here with Yadi. And like I said, with Michael, he deals with the herbalism and all that. And the show is not over yet, people. We just did Yadi. Okay? Now imagine, <laughs> okay? Imagine what the other two has to offer. Okay? Just, you know, hey, hey, it's, 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 it's only going to get, it's only going to be more interesting from this point. Okay, now we're going to go over to, um, we're going to go over to Rick Panico with his Hungar kung fu and it's the same thing again i want you to ask questions you can ask the same exact questions fred as what you did before hungar as for uh uh developing strengthening and developing your tendon ligaments it's also arm body technique to help you prevention for injury and a bunch of other stuff fred so go ahead um rick how you doing i'm doing good okay. doing good all right super. Fred, how are you i'm great how about yourself i'm doing good um, if I can speak on a, a few of the um, issues that you brought up earlier, um, uh, if, if you're up for it, I'd like to put you through a little, little um, um, physical training right now so you can kind of <laughs> get a feel for some of the um, uh, uh, positions and postures um, that, that we can use. It's going to help strengthen your, um, your ligaments, uh, your bones, your, all the joints in your body. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, one of the things in Hungar that we okay, do could I hold on, is, Rick? Could you hold on a minute, Rick? Oh, sure. Okay. Again, because people who just may be tuning in may not know what's going on. Um, Fred, um, Mr. Winfrey, could you go ahead and ask those questions again so people who's just coming on will know exactly what Rick was, as Rick is talking about? Okay. One of the questions that we were talking about is um, pre-workout for stretching and strengthening your muscles um, doing a pre-workout. Another thing we was talking about is preventive injuries when it comes to your quadcep, um, your biceps, um, your hamstrings, and some of the things that you can do as far as post to, you know, after a workout to, because like I said, my biggest thing is after a workout, I'm, I'm not tired or exhausted. I'm more like my body is tight from actually a workout. So it's not like I'm, and that's what I want to know, what I can do as far as to stretching and my thing is, I was taught that, you know, you stretch before you stretch after. But after I'm hearing this, it's more like, you know, you overstretching, and that's what's causing the muscles pain. Hmm. Comment, Rick? Yes, okay. Um, um, uh, um, he's correct there. Um, uh, if you stretch too much, um, hmm. uh, the stretch weakens your muscles so it can't hold the frame uh, together good and thus you will get um, pain in those areas so um, you want to keep your stretching limited and and also um, like Yadi was saying earlier um, you want to build the muscle um, at the same time that you're doing your stretches uh, um, um, one of the things in Hungar is that we try to train the whole body um, so one of the exercises I want you to try, um, we start with the fist. So you want to make a very tight fist by curling your fingers into your palm, um, putting your thumb on top of your index finger, and then just squeezing the fist. Now, the posture I'm going to show you, you had mentioned earlier about your shoulders, something to make your shoulders a little bit more loose, give it a little bit more flexibility. So the very first posture we do is we stand with our feet together and stand straight. One important thing is to always keep your back straight. So you make this tight fist. You put your fist on your hip all the way on the side of your body with um, the knuckles down and the fingers facing up. Then at that position, try to touch your elbows in the back of your body. As soon as you do that, immediately you'll feel your shoulders stretch like that immediately so you want to hold that posture Hmm. i'm going to show you tell you about a couple stances we do so you want to hold that posture right there while you're doing all these stances um so you're constantly trying to touch your elbows behind your body your fists are squeezing tight and that's going to stretch your shoulders and if you just stand straight like that with your feet together and the body straight that exercise right there is very good for the upper arms and the shoulder Um, the first stance that we do is the horse stance now the horse stance 
you want to put your feet uh, a little bit outside outside your shoulder width and very important you want your feet straight and then you're going to just kind of sit down like there's a chair behind you and your knees are going to bow outwards not mm -hmm. inwards They're going to bow outwards and a very important thing in this posture a lot of people hold this posture and they bend their back you don't want your spine bent at all so your butt is going to kind of push forward to make sure that the back and the spine are straight mm. so you want to start to bend your body with the knees focusing out <clears throat> to almost not quite make your thighs parallel to the ground same time you want to keep your back straight same time you want to hold your tight fist same time you want to pull the elbows back to stretch that shoulder and then once you get in this posture um, we begin to learn the the qigong breathing um, and very simply, just for somebody beginning, you take your navel, about three inches below your navel, mm -hmm. is your tan tian, where your energy is going to focus and circulate. So you actually got to put your mind there. You actually put your mind to your tan tian, and you begin to breathe from down there. And, and at, at this point, your mind is concentrating on your breathing. <laughs> You're going to sink your body lower. You're going to make your thighs more parallel to the ground. You have to remember to keep your butt pushed in to keep, keep the spine straight. <clears throat> and um, as you began, the fists are tight. The elbows are pulled back. Now, this stance, you want to start. You just hold that position. Concentrate on breathing. You want to start slow, maybe a minute, two minutes, whatever you can hold. But you continually want to work on that. You continually want to work on that and make your stance longer and lower and stronger. And the more you pa practice this one posture right there, um, it's going to give your body stamina um, through the breathing and the concentration that you're going to do. It's going to help clear your mind, um, give you more focus. Um, you also mentioned about your knees and strengthening your knees. Um, another unique stance um, that I've, I've, I have seen in ballet. So if you took ballet, you might have been in this posture before. If uh, you stand and put your left foot in front of your right foot and turn your left foot completely straight, and then you want to draw a straight line from your toes and take your right foot and step out in front of the left foot, but you're going to put your heel in line with your left toes and your right toes are going to be pointing out to the right. So your right foot is going to be turned all the way to the side. And your heel is going to be in a straight line with your back left toes. Then you're going to kind of come up on the balls of your left foot and bend your left knee down. So you should have about one fist distance between your knee, your left knee, and your right heel and the toes and then the right heel should be in a straight line and again your fists are on your hips and then you want to bring your left knee to about one inch off the ground mm. standing on the balls of the left foot <clears throat> that stance there very very good for for strengthening the knee ligaments the knee joints mm -hmm. and again you hold that posture as long as you possibly can hold that um, um, these these stances. So you want to take it easy in the beginning. Don't push yourself till you get used to um, the way you're turning your body, especially that stance. Mm -hmm. That one's called the unicorn stance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then uh, uh, for your um, um, for your hamstrings, uh, mm -hmm. the forward stance. The forward stance again. You can. Um, um, and, and like the unicorn, you can switch off, put your right foot in the back, put your left heel in front there, turn the toes to the left side and stretch that joint there and stretches the knees joints. The forward stance, you put either foot in the front and instead of holding the foot completely straight, if it's your left foot, you're going to turn it maybe 15 degrees towards the right. So the left foot isn't straight. And then your knee is kind of going to lock over the foot. And your back foot is going to be flat to the floor, completely flat. And you're going to use all the muscles in the back of your leg there. 
all those muscles all the way from from the back thigh muscles all the way down to the foot and you're just going to push that foot flat to the floor ah. and again all these stances you want to keep the spine straight the fists are going to be tight on your hips the elbows are going to be pulling trying to touch each other in the back and so you take each of these postures and you just stand as long as you can as you as you concentrate and breathe you want to think of each of the different muscles that you're working on you want to separate all the muscles the muscle from the foot the muscle coming up the calf the muscle coming up around the knee all the muscles in the body mm. and it's just a matter of concentrating and and building up the strength in that okay um, so the combination of the <clears throat> of the stances and the uh, uh, qigong breathing is very good um, for the bones, for the ligaments, for the tendons. And also, I would recommend uh, the use of some ditta jiao. Um, ditta jiao to all your different joints, especially the ones that um, uh, give you the, the most trouble. Um, because it, the ditta jiao is a, is a preventative uh, type of ointment. Uh, if it's massaged in the right way, and it allows to get down to the bone, down to the ligaments and tendons, help strengthen them, um, help uh, uh, produce more um, bone marrow, and uh, make the bone actually stronger than it was before you started applying the ditta jiao. Um, now, these type of exercises and the use of the ditta jiao should pretty much be a, be a daily routine. Um, uh, the, the strength in the body, you just want to keep um, encouraging more and more and more. Okay. I, I like that, Rick. Um, Fred. Fred. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, Mr. Winfred. Okay, yeah. let me break it down to you right quick as far as uh, why I chose Hungar. Uh, you know how bodybuilding builds your muscles and stuff like that? Lifting weights builds your muscles and stuff like that? You know that, right? Fred, can you hear me? Hello? Is he on, Robert? He's on there. Hello? I think he's doing those exercises. <laughs> good, good, good. good. <laughs> <laughs> he probably is. I mean, no, no sense in you know, just uh, checking it out, but I really got to have him on the chit chat right quick. Mm. Fred, are you back yet? He's still in stance. Uh, he's <laughs> still in stance. Okay. All right, That's yeah. a good student. I like that. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Okay. Uh, let me see. As far as, like I said, as far as what we go, the reason that I chose Hunk, there's a lot of martial arts out Tr there. Now, Hello, Fred. Hmm. Uh, All right. Hello, Fred. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, Fred. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I hear you good. Okay, did you okay. hear everything he had to say? Um, yes. Um, and I have another question. Okay, go ahead. Um, and this is for um, a lot of, as you see, linebackers who have to be in that stance that they're almost sitting down in a chair. I know. So yeah. my question is, is, what can they do to strengthen that stance? Because as you know, you have a lot of pressure on your lower back your hamstrings and your knees when you're in that position so think about it you're in that position almost like 60 minutes and you're constantly in and out of it so what can you do to um, strengthen that because a lot of times we do a lot of weights with squats mm -hmm. but also we have something like we might stand in a wall or we do like the duck walk drill mm -hmm, or we mm -hmm, do mm -hmm. um, lunges okay it, could, you, could you hold on a minute Rick just gonna let me ask a, a question for him sure, right quick thanks. Okay, uh, Fred, you know that when we body, when we lift weights, it builds our muscles, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so my question is, is how do we build, how do we strengthen our tendons and ligaments? Okay, so when, you, when you're in those sitting positions and stuff, it's a matter of strengthening your tendons and ligaments that will determine how long you're able to uh, maintain that position, not necessarily the muscle strength. I had a bunch of martial arts that I can choose, you know, to be on this program, but I, cho I chose Hungar 
And I want you to listen to this very carefully and to every other football player, athlete out there. Just like weights are to bodybuilding, how you lift weights in order to build muscle, okay? These hungar practices build your tendons and your ligaments. The longer you practice, when you begin to practice hungar, you begin to strengthen your tendons and your ligaments. So although you don't look like you are strong, you are strong because the stronger your tendons and ligaments become, the more strength that you can pull from your muscles. Can you understand that, Fred? Yes, I do. Okay, so the whole thing of their movie in football, they always teach you how to keep moving and to move fast, right? Correct. And in Hungar, how do we move? Rick? How do we move? Yeah, in Hungar. Oh, you, you all, in Hungar, you always move with a route, a root. Your, your, your power comes from the ground, how you're rooted. Um, um, now, uh, we practice slow. There you go. That's it. That's the Eastern perspective versus the Western perspective right there. Eastern perspective, you either standing still and more of a, you either standing still in a rooted position, which develop tendons and ligaments, or you're moving in a very slow type of movement, which not only develops the tendons and ligaments, but also develops the fascia that's wrapped around the muscles as well. Do you agree with that, Yadi? Yes. Yes. Fascia is the key. It's sort of like the blanket that, that uh, insulates your body between the muscles and the skin. Yeah. So this is what I want you to understand, Fred, is it's a secret. You ever see those movies when they, you see those movies, uh, Fred, when they getting hit with the baseball bats and all that other type stuff and it doesn't seem to affect them? Right. Okay. You have a sh you have what you call fascia that's located that's on the muscle. It's on the covering of the muscle. It's like a wetsuit. And you can read the book on called The Anatomy Trains in order to validate this. But we have a wetsuit around all of our muscles. Now, these ancient Kung Fu practices, especially those of Hong Gar, specializes in developing this fascia, this wetsuit, these tendons and ligaments in order to develop power rather than just working on the muscles. That's why when you see these people or these Kung Fu people, they do not look as strong as I do, but they, uh, they, they are strong. It's like with the brick masons, with the farmers, with these mechanics. They're very strong, although they don't look like it. Right, um, Fred? Right, that's correct. Because they're constantly, there's something that they're constantly doing with their movements. Yes, constantly that there's something that they're doing with their movement. They're developing that fascia. Now, what the Hungar people actually do, what this Hungar ancient practice is, I would say, you know, because I could pull anybody, but this is what makes this so unique is that they mo they utilize these slow movements. If I ask you right now, Fred, what technique, what program out there do you know that can develop tendons and ligaments, you would tell me what? Um, a lot of times they want to do, use those resistant bands. That's it. I mean... That's it. I mean, I mean, they they, they tell you, that's but that, is it? Go ahead. Yeah, that's all. You, that's all you really have. That's it. That's it. Okay. But these people over here in Asia have spent thousands of years, hundreds, thousands of years, or whatever, perfecting movements that can make you stronger, that can help you to resist injury a lot more. And this is why I'm introducing you to Hungar because this specializes. And internal strength. You got to understand, it's not necessarily specializing in kicking somebody's butt, okay, or, or the fighting. That's that's not why I got you. Uh, that's not why I'm showing you this, Fred. Right. I'm showing this because of the exercise. Because I'm a personal trainer. I'm not specializing in beating behind people's behinds and stuff. I'm specializing is how can I make people stronger? How can I get the results that I'm looking for? And this particular result is how do we develop stronger tendons and ligaments and how do we keep ourselves from being uh, uh being injured and stuff when we get tackled in football get hit with an elbow and everybody and that's developing that fascia and this is what hungar brings to the table for you uh, you get that picture fred yes i do because that's what a lot of football players that's our biggest thing that we're 
that it comes to is what can we do to prevent and strengthen our bodies constant weight training because we don't want to look we don't want to be so big that we can't run but we need that strength to be able to a lot of people don't realize that a lot of times it doesn't matter if I can bench press 400 pounds, but how many times if I'm getting hit, can I can I get my body up off the ground as mm-hmm. 210 pounds constantly? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're that's what the, this is what hung on because you took uh, you took Taekwondo, Taekwondo and stuff. Did y'all really focus on that? Did y'all focus on how to fight or did you uh, did you focus on exercises and stuff to develop the um, develop it, the body? Go it ahead. was more focusing on fighting, more exactly. like katas. Exactly. More like things of that nature. And that's um, not what you need, is kick it? Kick movements, punch movements, um, hand-to-hand combat. So it really didn't, I didn't get out of what I thought I was exactly. going to get out of it. Exactly. Now, does Hunger sound like something that you, that's more applicable? Yes. It yeah, definitely yes. does. And that's why there's a lot of martial arts out there, but Hunger is the one I chose because it has all the exercises that are needed in order to develop the tendons, the ligaments, and also develops the fascia. And also, this dit dow that they actually um have this stuff that you put on your body when your aches and pains that actually open up uh blood clots and make your bones stronger and toughen up your skin and all this other types in order for you to take injuries. That's very interesting stuff. You ever see that one where the guy actually takes a uh it's called wine therapy, wine old therapy, with his basketball player guy. He takes a bath in red wine. Yes, I've seen that. Very, mm-hmm, inter- yeah. yeah, very interesting. Okay, a lot, a lot of people like to talk to uh, talk to me about. Uh, uh, now, I mean, I gotta ask yourself why. Now, he says in the thing that it was for oh, it was for him to get over his injuries and stuff, right? Isn't that right, Fred? Right, I remember that because he also tried to hyper chamber, but that didn't work. Nah, the hyper chamber didn't work. But what does did that? What does did that do for you, Rick? Very quickly. Um, Ditta is going to, uh, first of all, like you said, it's going to heat the blood up so you don't bruise to the area and the area is able to heal. Um, then as you start massaging it deeper, it helps to um, uh, give strength to the muscle. But the most important thing is it helps to strengthen and replenish the bone and strengthen the ligaments, which yeah. is very important. And that's very uh, useful as an athlete, isn't it, Fred? Yes, that, that's our main concern. Um, to use something instead of jumping in a cold bath and spending ah, 20, terrible. 30 minutes in a bunch of ice. Right. <laughs> terrible. Right. I'm not going to say what terrible was not terrible. I'm only focused on what's going to work. And I know from personal experience by using Dit Dow or what they call Target Bomb or whatever like that, it can make your joints and everything a lot stronger than what is the only question or that you have to use with that is to make sure that whatever did dial or whatever ointment that you use is is safe now fred as your um as your time at practice how much what type of ointments or whatever that you actually use did you use anything like a dit dial on your joints and everything to actually to make them not just to take away the pain but to actually make a, a make yourself stronger well we never really did anything to make ourselves stronger it was more like the tiger bomb things like that nature when the muscles were aching to you know relieve the ache and pain or to be able to you know i'll say as as you're training and you're on the field to endow the pain until until the um, training is over okay and did that was different than that is it rick oh most certainly yes um if you'd use it before practice um, and then, of course, if you get an injury, then you, you use it and concentrate it on that area. Um, and if I can add one more thing, because we've talked about it some, but um, one of the things that separates uh, a lot of the um, Kung Fu styles, um, besides the type of training we do, is the breathing. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, the beginning and then the advanced learning of Qigong breathing. Um, breath is very important in our body, so to get... Any type of recovery from an injury, prevention of an injury, um, uh, strength from your muscles, all depends on your breath. And, okay. you know, it, 
football players, baseball players, the exercises they get are just to strengthen the external muscle. Mm -hmm. um, and as you were explaining before, a physique of a, a strong Kung Fu person might not look like he's that strong because the power comes from within the body. Mm -hmm. And within our body is that breath to help control that power to help generate that power that's true so that, if, that's very important fred uh any chance that uh y'all can plan you and a couple of your buddies who play football can actually come here to charlotte to meet uh yachty and rick um yes i, I i'm quite sure we can uh, i know i'm supposed to be up there this weekend um but i can make sure to get a couple of buddies together uh, maybe in the next couple of weeks to come up there. And then, you know, if this is something that works, I can definitely bring it to my um, my semi-pro team and the arena team um, for the upcoming, upcoming season because our first preseason game is February 21st. Okay. Well, that sounds like a very interesting challenge. Yachty and Rick, do you accept? Challenge oh, accepted. I I, I guarantee that uh, uh, some of the exercises that I show would be very, very beneficial to them. Okay. If I, if okay. I might just make a comment, mm -hmm. what uh, Sifu Rick is describing so, are no, no, excellent. excellent. Okay, hold on. Is, Go uh, ahead, Fred. Go ahead, Fred. Um, the other question that I have is, now how would this work when, you know, you have somebody that's 6'2", 6'3", 300 and 400 pounds, and you know they're putting a lot of pressure on their joints. Would this help them out also? Like the offensive line, defensive line. You know, it's people ten. that are that are you know have a lot of weight to carry around. Yeah, daily. yeah. It's a, it's a, it's the same thing. The stronger your tendons and ligaments become, the more easy it's going to be in order for them to hold the weight. Have you ever heard of? Uh, Slow progress is important. Slow progress, especially for somebody that big. Yeah, especially for somebody that big, slow progress. But um, like I tell a lot of people, uh, Fred, you know you eat a lot of protein in order to build your muscles, right? Correct. What type of food do you eat in order to build your tendons and ligaments? That's a good question. I don't. I honestly don't know. Exactly, and that's why you have weak tendons and ligaments. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's not. It's the same thing. If I ask, if I ask uh, Rick, what type of uh, food do you need to eat in order to build tendons and ligaments? Um. Um. Again, that's not my expertise. Exactly. But it's not a uh, main. Just a regular good diet and the exercise and your breathing. <laughs> plenty of water. Yeah, plenty of water. Okay. Uh. Wh well. Uh, now, of course, I know Yachty would know, okay, but that's one thing that really, uh, uh, that's one thing that really stops uh, your train, uh, why hunger practice or these practices kind of go low to slow is because you notice that when you don't eat a lot of protein and your body build and your, pro your progress won't develop as fast as if you are eating protein, right, Fred? Yes, that's correct. So yes. when you're doing these tendon ligament development and fascia exercises, you got to feed that if you want it to grow faster in order to be ready by February. Now, I know Yachty has, has knows what foods you need in order to develop stronger tendons and ligaments and fascia. Go ahead, Yachty. Okay. Okay. In order to build tendons and ligaments, you got to think about what they're made of. And probably the chief components are collagen, right? Right. And high hyaluronic acid. Go ahead, boy. So you have HA, hyaluronic acid, which is basically what's inside. If, if you ever watch old people eat chicken, <laughs> really old people, like they suck on the bone. Mm -hmm. uh, in Chinese medicine, they have something called bone soup, which is basically just pig collagen. There but you, you want to get a lot of collagen. You know, this is a protein. Collagen is a protein. Mm -hmm. It's a type of protein. It's not, you're not going to get it from a protein shake, though. You're, you're mm -hmm. not going to synthesize it from eating, you know, 50 grams of protein in a shake. Collagen, you can ingest directly. You can get it from, you know, bones, from sucking on the animal bones. Or you can take it as a supplement. Yeah, mm -hmm. bone broth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a great thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that, you know, a lot of times... I was a vegan for a lot of years. Like, I didn't eat uh, animals. I didn't eat animal products, and I was told, mm -hmm. being a vegan, you know, this is the way, you know, if 
this is the best way to be healthy. It's honestly not. I eat a lot of stuff. Uh, they're deer antler. Uh, it's a supplement that's really good for increasing almost every function in the body. Mm-hmm. It's also, you mentioned last time, you mentioned polyrachis ants. Mm-hmm. Ants are, have a protein that's very unique, that's good in building the essence energy, but also the tendons of the ligaments. But collagen and, and hyaluronic acid being the chief thing that you want to ingest. You know, there's okay. a lot of, of organic ways, non-supplementary ways to get it, but those are the key things. Right. So, Fred, when you start including collagen into your diet, even collagen comes from Jello. but when you start focusing on uh, the foods that you need in order to develop stronger tendons and ligaments, so not only are you on a diet doing that, but performing these, ex- these unique exercises for Hangar, and also with um, Yadi's going to be showing you these healing movements and stuff to go along with, well, that's how you're going to develop these um stronger tendons and ligaments and see the only reason i'm here today is i'm kind of like a translator is that i'm taking i'm I'm showing you the prop the uh the uh sports applications for this technology for this eastern stuff you see where i'm coming from with this fred um yes i do because i mean i'm learning so much in this hour Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. i'm thinking a lot of things that i already knew and i'm 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 still behind the power curve, even though you know, <laughs> being a pro and you know constantly working out or you yes. know d- dealing with uh, personal trainers. Uh-huh. This is new. I mean, yeah. I'm learning something that you know is is real new to me. And we're, um, and so we're, I mean, and I'm loving this technology that I'm getting. I mean, this information that I'm getting. I'm, I mean, I'm absorbing it like a sponge. Uh huh. And we're not we're not finished yet. We still got Michael, the herbalist and Tai Chi person. So you know, it's <laughs> it's it's not over yet. But uh, go ahead, Rick. Could you please give us your information? Uh, your name, where you teach at, contact information, please. Okay, my name's Rick Panico. I teach Hungar Kung Fu in Mooresville, North Carolina. Uh, you can reach me by phone at 704-663-6305. Um, I have a Facebook page, the Hungar Kung Fu Academy in Mooresville. And you can get to my website by www.rickpanico.com, R-I-C-K-P-A-N-I-C-O. Okay. And Malik, thank you very much for including me in this uh, segment. You think? Uh, thank you, Rick, for all the information. Uh, Rick, we're going to finish up with that last question because I am interested in knowing for real because I can assume I ought to know, but I, I know, but sometimes I don't. Uh, how? What was that last question you said, Fred, about a, a tall person weighing 300 pounds, their tendons and ligaments? Right. What I was saying is with a tall person that, you know, they're 300 pounds, um, my question was how much more stress are they putting on their ligaments and what movements can they do? Should they do it a little bit slower, or should they do more, as they call it, the twitch muscles, and they're doing it faster? Go ahead and answer that, Rick, right quick. Uh, I would definitely say uh, for somebody that big, especially the exercises that I'd be showing, it would be a slower progress. Um, maybe a little, somebody a little bit smaller framed, uh, uh, less weight, would be able to, to squat and bend down, um, you know, a little bit lower. Um, but the basic, the exercise would basically be the same because these exercises are going to help strengthen uh, their tendons and ligaments. So uh, the more they do this, the lower they're going to become and the more able they're going to be to support the body weight that they're carrying around. Okay, and let me also throw in one thing like this. Uh, you're going to learn the hunger. You're going to have, yeah, bring your big dudes over, and I'll go ahead and look over and assist what I can with Yachty and with Rick when they do come. But I'm telling you, for the big dudes, just with, uh, just when they were training with us, have them to do fruitarian. Just eat a lot of fruits because the fruit, uh, organic fruits, these organic fruits have the natural energy and everything that can then be transferred over into the body. Uh, you see, a lot of times when we begin to fall and, you know, when they get weak, especially for these bigger dudes, see, the bigger you are, the more life energy that you need. Am I right, fellas? Definitely. Yes. Yachty, am I right? Yes. Okay, just want to make sure because I know you you like my counterpart. (laughs) Okay. All right. See, if you have if you have him to eat these apples, cranberries, goji berries, a lot, a lot of food, that would... 
and y'all y'all all, all, all people take you we have a particular chi that's responsible for order for strengthening up our uh tendons our ligaments back of our lower back our tendons and different stuff like that am i right fellas yes definitely yes indeed okay and this is going to be to the next one am i right with that michael yes you are okay we're going to go well, i'm going to go ahead and um we're going to go ahead and ask you second this next question is to you and we're going to go over the nutrition and also the Tai Chi. And I want you to go into more uh, detail about how to strengthen the uh, ankles, the lower back, and the knees that these heavyweight people would need. Because they do need more life force. Go ahead and ask your question, Fred. Again. Okay. Um, this is um, a question that, especially when it comes to the ankles. What can you do to strengthen the ankles? Um, I know a lot of times with us... Um, athletes, when we do a lot of running, um, we have issues with our Achilles tendons. Mm -hmm. um, also, the shins, because, you know, we're constantly running. Mm -hmm. So what can we do to strengthen uh, those? Not, um, I, I know what you can do as far as, I have heard a lot about what you can do as far as your ACL, your MCL. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to a bigger guy who's constantly, as you know, lineman, I constantly bent over for 60 minutes. So you got a linebacker that's constantly bent over. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things they can eat or what are some of the exercises they can do to strengthen that muscle so when they get into the third and fourth quarter, it's not a point of exhaustion. They're, you know, they're physically fit um, to complete these tasks instead of just, you know, everybody thinking, you know, the more running you do or the more, you know, cardio you do, that, that um, that's going to help. But a lot of times it's not really that. It's more like your posture and how strong your ligaments are yep he's right on that too okay um michael could you tell us a little bit about yourself for those who don't know um yeah my name is michael chitowski i'm a, a acupuncturist and owner of east earth trade winds um, a chinese herbal um, store and uh, cataloger and internet business and i've been involved in chinese herbs for um, professionally 30 years now um I was just going to address one of the things about when you're talking to Yachty about um, the, tendon, the tendon issue, too, and this goes back to the ankles, your Achilles tendons and stuff like that. But in, in China, you know, they didn't have supplements thousands of years ago, so they would eat tendons. And um, deer tendon is something, you know, for us hunters, not that I'm a hunter, but anybody who's a hunter out there, um, can easily get, and you just cook the deer tendons um, for a long time till they're soft. I've had them before, and, um, and they're like butter. I mean, it's you know, deer tendon doesn't sound like it's um, sounds like it's going to be tough and chewy and you know hard to to get down. But you cook it, it can be just like you know soft as butter, and um, very delicious. Um, you could probably find that kind of um, meal in some of the larger Chinatowns. I know in the um, San Francisco, Oakland, San Jose area, you can find that. That is, I'm, I'm sure, New York City, anywhere there's a big Chinatown. Um, and maybe even in a small city um, that has a you know Chinese population that you can ask around at your restaurant and find someone who can cook you up those tenants because it's a, the number one way of nutrition is to... Um, to go to the food source with that. But other than that, like um, Yadi was saying, that making the uh, bone broths and things like that, it's doing, uh, you know, soup bones and things like that, it's doing them like over, almost overnight and like a, a crock pot kind of thing would be good. But as far as, you know, when you're, when you're really heavy and... Hold on, um, hold on, hold on. Michael. Michael. Yeah. So you're saying that this yes. deer tendon will strengthen our tendons, our ligaments, and the fascia? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. See, I mean, that's what you, you know. That's what the um, chondroitin and stuff like that. All the, all those kind of things are like that. I mean, they're basically taking cartilage and stuff and grinding it up into a powder and, and then selling it to you as a supplement for you know a lot of bucks. But yeah, yeah. You know, basically, you're using you know like to treat like. Like to treat. So um, yeah. And so like I was saying, you can get it fresh. I mean, if if anybody hunts or knows hunter friends, tell them to save the tendons and you cook them up. Um, but like I said, you got to cook them a long time. And, um, you know, if somebody wants to, I'll find them a recipe for that. Um, but we can also add some other herbs in there, too, to, to make it a very nutritious meal. But that's how, in Chinese medicine, uh, I've got Chinese friends, you know, they've, they've twisted their ankles, and they go, oh, I've got to go eat some tendons. And that's, that's what Chinese people do. They, they look for the food that's going to treat that. Okay, you hear that, Fred? 
Yes, I did. Okay, I was want to make sure because it's very important for your training. Your February is just right around the corner. <laughs> so, in other words, are you saying I should get um, some deer tender and you know boil it, or yeah. I should get like bones? And yeah, you can. You know, you can contact me later. I can get your recipe for that. You'll contact him later on, and he's going to give you a recipe for that. I want you to okay. yeah, I want you to give it a go. And we'll see for you and the rest of the boys who's going to be practicing these hungar exercises. And, right. uh, yeah, and let's see what happens because, you know, it's it's a slow. Without the proper nutritional aspect uh, when practicing hungar, the training is going to be slow. You need to eat it in order to build it. Okay. Um, well, that's just my idea. That's me from personal training. Okay. But, you know, that's how I, I approach everything is from personal training. All right. Uh, continue on, Michael, about the big dudes and stuff. Okay. Okay. Well, the other thing, too. Fred, when you when you started in the beginning, you said that you you, know, you tried karate and stuff like that, and you even tried ballet, which is notable because in ballet, you know, people have good long stretch um, extensions on their legs, and they seem to have powerful mus muscles. But the thing is, is that you don't see any ballet dancers, at least I never see any, who are like 60, 70, 80 years old, but <laughs> you will find people who practice qigong who are those ages. You, you will find people who practice hungar, kung fu, tai chi, who are... 60, 70, 80, 90 years old, they can all do this for long periods of time because they're not damaging their joints and they're not overstretching their their um, muscles and tendons. And so in ballet, for example, you tend to isolate muscles a lot. And I think, I'm not an expert on weight training machines, but I think that's what, what ends up happening with weight training machines if you isolate muscles. And in that sense, I I would think that free weights is a little better because it's there's more balance involved in, um, in lifting, which can help your muscles a lot. But, um, but for the big guys, um, the number one thing is that, yeah, they're big, and that causes problems. It's going to cause stress on the joints just because of their, their mass. And then with the job they're doing, I mean, it's just like, you know, well, you know, it's just like freight trains hitting. Um, I could never survive the hits you guys take. Um, but they just have to do it slow, like like Rick was saying. It's got to be slow. They can't expect an overnight, um, an overnight miracle. I'm going to change in one week or whatever. It's like this is what you have to do. This training program, you have to do it, you know, for days, weeks, months on end, and years on end to to make sure um, it keeps you in shape and keeps you healthy. Because in the end, you know, if you blow out your knees, um, you can't play, and and there mm -hmm. goes your game. So. Um, my expertise in the martial arts is in Tai Chi, which is a very slow um, exercise, and it involves a lot of um, up and down movement. There are some Tai Chi forms, um, which they start off standing up straight, and then they bend their legs, we call it sinking, and they stay low. In the form that I learned, um, there's, we don't stay low. We go up and down all the time, and so there's always this, um, this natural um, lubrication to the joints. And so essentially, according to the Tai Chi classics, and um, I'll have to agree with this, but if you practice long enough, your joints will feel like a child's joints. Yep. I mean, I'm, I'm going to close in on 60, and my joints, my hip joints, my knee joints, my elbows, they feel like little kids, um, you know, joints. But I've been practicing Tai Chi for years and years, and um, I feel very flexible. But the Tai Chi, that slow motion, will... Um, will lubricate your joints and in turn help um, prevent damage to the joints. Um, and also, if you have injuries, it'll help repair it. But, but you have to find a good Tai Chi teacher. And I would find somebody um, who's probably spent at least five years learning minimum, um, uh, preferably longer. Um, there's a lot of people who um, say they know Tai Chi or, or um, you know, practice Tai Chi for a long time, but... Whether they're good teachers, that's another question. Um, I was talking with a friend of mine um, who talked to this. There's a Chinese guy who is a, um, he's a Taoist monk, and he, he's out of Colorado, but he, he trained at the Wudong Monastery in China. And he's been in the United States for 20 years, and he told him recently that um, in the 20 years he's been in the United States, he hasn't seen anybody who can do Tai Chi correctly. So, which is an interesting statement. Um, I'm kind of afraid to have them see what I do, <laughs> but hopefully I'm doing it right. Um, but the point is, is that not everybody 
learns Tai Chi or teaches Tai Chi is doing it correctly. So in Tai Chi, you want to move from your center. Um, we talk about the Dan Tian, the center of our body, which is about three inches below our navel. You have to coordinate your movements together. You have to move with uh, concentration and focus. Um, we want, it's like a consciousness of our bodies, not only like of our acupuncture meridians or the muscles, but almost like a cellular consciousness. Um, being totally aware of our body, and when we're, we're like that, then we can get that flexibility. Then we get that flexibility in our joints. So as far as other things you can do, too, is, um, you know, there's lots of herbs you can take which help um, with muscles and tendons. Um, if I was going to select one herb for you to take um, that, that would be very beneficial, I'd have to say that ginseng would be at the top of the list because um, ginseng can give you more energy. It can increase endurance. Um, it has... Um, can speed the transmission of nerve impulses and also is said to um, strengthen conditioned reflexes in the body. And the best way to take ginseng is getting a whole root, and you'd need to cook that. Um, you'd cook it in four cups of water, you bring it to a boil, and then um, after it's brought to a boil, you boil it for five minutes, and then turn it down and simmer it for about 40, 45 minutes or longer. But you're not going to drink the whole amount of ginseng. You're not going to drink four cups of it because you'd be pretty wired, but drink maybe a half a cup or one cup at the most. And that would give you a lot more endurance um, and strength. And it would also help um, help recovery afterwards. But the main thing is like with ginseng is that more isn't always better. You can get, um, you can take too much. You can get too wired on it. Um, if you take um, too much or do it for prolonged periods of time, you can get um, kind of edgy, irritable, because your liver isn't able to process the energy that you're creating in your body. But, um, but it's a very good herb to, um, to use. There's also um, ginseng substitutes, which are a little bit milder, and one is called codenopsis, and that's commonly used as a ginseng substitute. It's not as expensive as ginseng, but it's very good. In fact, um, this past Thanksgiving, we, um, I think I was telling you last time at the last show, we, were, we stuffed the turkey with shiitake mushrooms, which are good for the immune system. There's also some codenopsis in there and some um, the red jujube dates, which are a chi tonic and energy tonic. So we made a real healthy turkey. Um, but once again, using the, the codenopsis is like a ginseng substitute. So um, you feel good. It helps your digestive system. It gives you more energy, that kind of thing. So when you're training, um, you can use the codenopsis, you can use ginseng, and then afterwards, um, to recover, you need blood tonics, things that circulate the blood. Like Rick was saying about the ditta jiao, um, that helps open up the capillaries and, and flow blood to the injured area. And you can take blood tonics internally, like the angelica sinensis, which is really good. Um, there's a number of different blood tonics you can take that will help um, improve circulation in the body and help speed up recovery, um, you know, from the injuries that you've received. Um, addressing your question about the, um, any specific exercises, you know, for the, you know, the ankles, lower back, knees, things like that, um, I would say, you know, my expertise is Tai Chi. I would go back to that. Um, it's a slow process, but it, would, but it might teach you how to move from your center a little bit better and... Um, and how to move properly, which might alleviate some of the injuries. Okay. All right. Uh, Fred. Yes, I'm here. Okay. Now, one other question mm -hmm. I have. Mm -hmm. with Now, if you moving everything from your center, it, would that help as far as your balance? Because a lot of times, you know, as a receiver or running back, we are focusing on our balance as far as either getting hit and being able to maintain our balance and our strength. That's why a lot of times, a lot of running backs and receivers have that MCL and ACL problem is because a lot of times when they when they go up in the air, they might come down wrong or they might land wrong. So this is a good way using Tai Chi to strengthen up those movements so it, it teaches you also maybe how to land correctly before while getting hit. Yeah, good, good question. I think maybe it's not so much a strength as developing a flexibility so that um, you know, we talked earlier about the drinking water, and so you don't want to snap, and you want to you want to bend instead of snapping. And um, on a lot of those hits you guys take, 
um, you know, you're just in the wrong position and, that, you know, no matter what you do, you're probably going to get hurt on some of these things. But I think if you're doing Tai Chi, that you'll also learn to have um, develop the ability to relax so that when you get hit, um, you don't get you don't feel it as much. It's kind of like that. They say that when like a drunk driver gets in an accident, I mean, a lot of times they live through it because they're just so relaxed while they kill their passengers who are not so relaxed because they all tense up um, or the other car. But, um, but with Tai Chi, it helps you to become softer, more flexible, and to react against something hard with the opposite, which is softness. And I'd mentioned last, um, the last show about being in, in uh, Beijing and stepping in front of a three-wheeled motorcycle, and um, the instant it, it hit me, I just totally relaxed. I didn't get hurt. And, um, but that was my reaction from my training, and I think the same thing could apply to football. Um, you know, like you get hit, but, you, but you're able to relax into it instead of tensing up because when you tense up, you know, um, that's when you get hurt. So I think that would be the advantage to learning Tai Chi. But, but once again, with Tai Chi, it's not something you can learn in, you know, a weekend course or a month or whatever. Um, it takes a lot of time and it takes practice. You've got to be able to devote um, probably a minimum, like, you know, which isn't much, but a minimum of about a half hour a day, maybe twice a day. And um, and then maybe after you know a year you'll start to to get it, but um, but it should help with your balance a lot in the meantime. Mm -hmm. So it would be it would definitely be good for your balance. I mean that's something you can develop pretty quick because you're moving slowly, and so mm -hmm. without even realizing you're improving your balance, you're going to improve it. Yeah. Now the re reason I like Tai Chi so much is you know that uh, day by day, month by month, and year by year, our body is always changing, isn't it, Fred? Um, yes, that's correct. Yeah, we. I mean, we always learn these new muscles, which are brand new babies, and we're always learning these new techniques, which are brand new skills. What happened is that your Tai Chi form is always going to stay, is always going to stay the same. Isn't that right, Michael? Yes. Okay, so what happens with this, you get what we call total body integration and also total body awareness. Uh, what the Tai Chi movements is going to actually do, Fred, is going to help to incorporate all the new moves that you've learned. It's going to help to incorporate all the new Hungar stuff that you learn. It's going to help to incorporate all the new uh, Qi Kung styles and stuff that you need to do. See, a lot of times when you get injured or something, it's because you're doing something, your body has a gap where it doesn't know what to do it's a blank spot it doesn't know which program or whatever to go into next because there's no instructions or anything right now it's like well what do i do it can't because you have to think about which movement you go to with the integration or with the tai chi what happens is instead of being clumsy or it helps to integrate everything so you automatically know what to do it integrates uh, it integrates all that new stuff. That's why I like the uh, Tai Chi movements a lot. Like, if you ever check a lot of the martial arts master, whatever style that they actually master, they always go back and add Tai Chi later. Am I right, fellas? Yadi? Yes. Okay, Yadi, they go back and learn Tai Chi later on, right? Yadi's not there. Uh, they go. <laughs> they, uh, uh, Rick, do they later on? They start. Did they start to learn that Tai Chi? Well, um, I'm going to be following my seafood's advice. The uh, the hungar can be done very soft and, and slow, you know, like Tai Chi. Once we get advanced enough, we know how to do the breathing, or it can be done uh, very hard as you're younger. So um, basically the answer to that is yes. Okay. They go, to, uh, they go to slower to learn it actually better. Now, see, for it, when you start learning the Tai Chi or when you start taking things slow or whatever, you're giving your body time enough to integrate. So when you are in a particular position uh, that's kind of awkward, your body will automatically snap and just know what to do with it. Because you're used to doing everything fast all the time. Am I right, Fred? Yes, that's correct. But like I was saying, with the Tai Chi, because um, as a running back or receiver, we're always taught to brace for impact. That's right. The first time we're taught to, you know, we ball up and we automatically brace for the impact. All right. You take the impact. Now what do you do? Well, then you basically you take the impact and then you fall to the ground to absorb it. 
Right. You, then you take the impact and then you evolve to some. But then the whole thing is about how are you uh, when you uh, knocked off balance or whatever. You have to learn the proper way in which to hit the ground. Now I'm not saying to be total, uh, not to be uh, rigid, just like an on rod, or just be floppy, just like a rag. You gotta have a. Ch you have to have to stay in a state of vibrancy. You understand that, Fred? Um, yes, I do. Yeah, I we're do. not saying to be completely relaxed the way you hurt yourself. Never you land on the floor like a rag, uh, like a, a rag dog, right, Michael? Yes. Yeah, you got to have like a, a stick, like a bamboo stick. Okay, so when, when you hit, it take it more like of a ba like more like a bamboo stick. Stick, but regardless. Okay, you take all of this information. What, what I need from you to pull from Michael is basically this about the, the developing the tendons and the ligaments. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, this is the only one for your acupuncture. Are there acupuncture points or acupressure points that you can use in order to stimulate and add more energy to your ankles, your knees, and your lower back? Michael. Yes, there is. Yeah, there's, you know, there's acupuncture points all over the body. And, um,. If you're looking for preventative treatment, basically there's um, you can use points on the, the spleen and stomach meridians. The spleen in Chinese medicine is said to govern the muscles of the body, so you could use points on the spleen meridian in particular. The liver meridian um, governs the tendons mm -hmm. and ligaments of the body, mm -hmm. so you could use use the points on that. Um, probably acupuncture is going to come in best as you know part of the the recovery you know, in those cases to be treated after that. But you can use either what are called local points, points in the area where you're having trouble, like right around the ankles or knees mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, or shoulders, or you can use what are called distal points, points farther away. Um, for example, when I treat someone with ankle problems, I, I never put needles in their ankles. I mm -hmm. use the opposite end of the body. I use points in the wrist to treat the ankles. Or if they have knee problems, I use points in the elbows. Um, the advantage for that... Um, the way I see it is that we can test the area of pain as we're being treated. So if I was to treat someone with a, an ankle injury or a knee injury by putting needles in the, the ankle or knee, um, we'd have to wait 30 minutes to see if it had an effect, you know, after we take the needles out. And then, you know, the person who's getting treatment, you know, I'd ask them to, to move their ankle or leg and say, how's it feel? And they, they may say, well, it feels great, or they may say, no, it feels the same. But if I use points in the... Um, in the opposite end of the body, in the ankle or the elbows, um, we can test it right now um, because there's no no needles there. So a lot of times if somebody has a knee injury, I'll put needles in their elbows and I'll say, okay, start moving your knees, bend, squat, whatever you need to do that, that you know, has pain. And then we can see if we get the result because if we get the, the right point or the right combination of points, that pain can just go away in an instant because the um, acupuncture works basically through the nervous system and circulatory system. Mm -hmm. And um, nerve impulses go through the nervous system between 40 and 60 feet per second mm -hmm. based on mm -hmm. what type of nerve fiber it's going through. Mm -hmm. So um, we can get instant results with some of this. And so that's, that's why I use this, this idea of distal points a lot mm -hmm. because I like to see um, an instant change okay. on somebody. Michael. The stronger you're, uh, stronger that we can increase the energy in our uh, ankles, knees, and also lower back, the stronger we can get, yes or no? Yes. Okay, that's a yes on Rick? Yes, definitely. Okay, all right. Is that a yes on everyone? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Okay, so that's all right. That's yes for everyone. So basically, what you're basically saying is, is that if by acupressure, reflexology, or whatever, that within a two weeks time, if they were, if they had a particular squat, uh, how much you squat right now, um, Fred? If you squat uh, at all, usually about four fifty, about five times. Okay, you four fifty five times. So if you got up with yadi or reflexology. If uh, they taught you some simple points in order to strengthen your uh, the send more energy to your ankles, your neck, uh, your your ankles, your knees, and also your lower back, he's saying that he could actually be able to increase the squat right now. Am I right, fellas? Yeah, should be yes. Okay, anybody do I get any nose with that? I I, mean, I would I like to say that everybody's got different opinions on on training. Um, uh huh. What. What I like to see people train at lower, lower weights, more repetitions um, for for the endurance, and that's what goes back to what you were saying earlier about 
the Chinese people or animal people in general, they're incredibly strong, but they're not, not necessarily big muscles. But when you do more reps, um, more reps, you're building up all your different muscle fibers and strengthening them up together. So um, I think it would be better, you know, my opinion is that if you, if you squatted 100 pounds 100 times, you'd be better off than doing 400 pounds, you know, well, four or five times. Well, the only reason he's squatting, yeah, yeah. The only reason he's squatting 450 is because the dudes that he has to plow through a lot of times are weighing about 300. Am I right, Fred? Yes, that's correct. Well, a lot of times, what what, what we do is we would um, a lot of times because we don't want to mess up our knees, mm -hmm. we won't do no more than 225. And we do what's called supersets, mm -hmm. which I'm sure you know about. You, mm -hmm. you do no more than you do ten sets of ten, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. it's just or, 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 or I might do like 185. And that's the most I would go up to, and I'm just doing like you know ten sets of ten, and that's it. And Nothing your, else. And your max is though your max is 450 for like four or five reps, right? Right. And what we do is every now and then they just see how much you can lift. Um, and what they do is you just warm up the muscles. You do like 225, five, six times, mm -hmm. and they're just gradually adding on weight. So, you know, because, you know, you can't just jump from one weight to another weight. Yep, that's it. You probably warm it. So that, does that make more sense, Rick? Yes, very much. Okay, so, yeah. Slow progress. Yeah, that's what exactly what they are. But my primary focus, like I was saying before, uh, when we hear the Michael, was learning uh, both reflexology and acupuncture. I want you to, uh, Fred, I want you to think that if you can use reflex as soon as you drink plenty of water, half your body weight in ounces, and make sure you get those oils, or else none of this stuff's really going to work. But um, you, what you need to do is uh, focus on strengthening your ten, sending more energy to your tendons, uh, to your ankles, to your knees, and also to your lower back, and also in order for you to see a dramatic uh, performance increase by February. And I think that can be done very shortly. Isn't that right, everyone? Yes, certainly. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I don't think because there's no, I mean, right now, let's face it, fellas, and I'm talking about everybody on the panel, they don't know no techniques on how to increase the amount of energy to their ankles, knees, and lower back. So if we did teach them how to do it, and if, the, you know, when it does increase, it's going to show, it's going to result in them able to increasing uh, their weights more. <laughs> Am I right? Yes. Yes, yes. I agree. So if I ask Fred, right now, what type of exercises do you know that increase energy to your ankles, your knees, and your lower back? You'll tell me what? Tai Chi. Nah, but the, <laughs> yeah, you said Tai Chi. But the, presently, right now, you don't know of any exercises or any techniques that increase the amount of energy or internal energy or whatever you like to call it uh, to strengthen your knees, your uh, ankles, and your lower back. Am I right? Um, no, only thing I would know is like what I see. They give you a physical therapy, and that's that it. they tell you like certain exercises to do. But I mean, I don't see that strengthening anything. I just see that because you're using your body weight. Yeah, this is going to be very interesting, fellas. It really is. Okay, um, Michael, could you go ahead and tell us exactly who you are, uh, how to get in contact with you, that type of stuff, please. Sure. Once again, my name is Michael Stowski. I'm the owner of East Earth Trade Lens and also a licensed acupuncturist in the state of California. Um, you can contact me through my website, which is www.eastearthtrade.com. Um, that's once again www.eastearthtrade.com. And my contact information is all on there. You'll find email addresses and things like that for me. Okay, that's fine. Could you say that one more time? Your, uh, yes, the company is, is um, East Earth Trade Winds. You can look up on Google or Yahoo, East Earth Trade Winds, or go directly to our website at eastearthtrade.com. East Earth Trade Winds. Okay, you got it. East Earth, yeah, East Earth Trade Winds is the company. The website is eastearthtrade.com. Okay, eastearthtrade.com. All right, got it. All right, Fred, what would you think about today's show? Um, yes, I'm, I'm very impressed. Yeah, I am too. Y'all fellas I, really pulled I, through. I have learned a lot. I'm looking forward to meeting these guys that I'm actually talking on the phone with. Okay, all right, all right. That's fine. So tell me, the very first guy that you talked to, we're going to go through what you've learned for each one. 
so that our audience out there who's listening can uh, pick up and what 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 would a professional football player uh, pick up from this? What did you pick up from Yadi? His first thing. Um, one of the things I picked up from him is, uh, far as you know, not overstretching, uh, making sure that I, my muscles are, are, as you say, liquefied. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I, I realize that one of the things that I'm doing too much of is stretching, thinking that's going to elongate the muscle when in actuality I'm hurting the muscle. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you also learned about that scar tissue thing, right? That is correct. That from my quad set injury, the scar tissue, that there's actually a way to... Um, you can't remove it, but I don't you know. can. Yadi, can oh. you? What can you do with that scar tissue again? Say that again. Okay, we do a therapy called scar release, which actually removes the hard collagen scar tissue. Once Ooh. you do that, movement is improved. It's. I mean, if there's a visible scar, it's not gonna. It's not gonna go away. I'll give you an example. Uh, I was cut when I was 15 years old mm-hmm. on my right pec. Mm-hmm. Uh, right, you know, right around the nipple. But I was—it wasn't a big scar that I had. It was maybe about the size of a, a quarter. Mm-hmm. If you look at all my old, I practiced Bagua Zhang martial arts. Mm-hmm. Bagua is one of the three mother arts of China, mm-hmm. and there are a lot of uh, exercises where our fingers are supposed to be extended, you know, like a particular shape. My right hand always um, had clawed fingers. Like my fingers were always clawed up. Like my, you know, almost half fist, where the others were almost straight. That scar on my chest affected the muscles in my hand. Mm-hmm. So, don't underestimate what scar tissue does in the body. It causes all the, all the fascia to kink on that particular limb. So, if there's scar tissue on the knee, that's going to affect the hip. That might even affect the lower back. That might affect the foot. And I'm only talking to you about a very small piece of scar tissue, but scar release therapy removes that hard collagen permanently. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the muscle, the uh, the range of motion comes back almost instantly. How long does it take? It's usually one, one or two sessions, you know, three if it's a long term, <clears throat> a long, if it's deeper scar tissue. Uh, it takes maybe 30 minutes per session. You might have some irritation on the skin. Because we are using, you know, an electro stem. We're using two, actually. And it, it might irritate the skin just from, you know, all the uh, all the simulation going back and forth. Okay. Uh, but, yeah. Okay. We, uh, we're going to, um, after the show is over with, everyone, please stay um, online so we can exchange information. Um, wow. That's, like I said, that's good. What did you learn from the next one with Rick Panico, Fred? Um, I'm trying to remember what did he actually do. He does the hung guard with I, the I stances some, and stuff. The, the, say that again. He I does got so much information in my brain right I now. Know, I, like, wow. I know. I know. <laughs> he deals with the stances and also with the dit dow and stuff that you can put on your joints in order to make it. Right, nice. right. That's the one thing that I'm very interested um, in getting, um, especially when I'm like pre workout and some of the warm ups that I do to uh for the joints and the muscles because i really can use that i think that would be definitely um something that will help not not just me out but i think that'll help out the um, bigger guys on our offensive line Mm -hmm. to help their joints and their movements because a lot of interest times that's our biggest concern is especially when you get to third and fourth quarter being being loose. That's why you see a lot of a lot of times you don't see when you're watching a game that you got a lot of guys that's actually on the bikes, you know, mm-hmm. trying to loosen up the muscles or they're getting massages at halftime or the third and fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. Or that's why you see a lot of guys in college catching cramps because, mm-hmm. like you said, we don't drink enough water. You can only drink four glasses. I'm still amazed you. I'm still amazed you playing ball. <laughs> 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 Aren't, wow. y'all, aren't y'all amazed at that, fellas? <laughs> yeah, that's a little crazy. For four glasses of water playing pro level. Wow. <laughs> you know, the, the, the spirit's got to count for something. You know Maybe what I mean? prayer or something involved. It must be. It must be. That is yeah. amazing, Fred. That really is. It really is. I guess somebody... Somebody likes me. <laughs> I, yeah, somebody did. That's like having that's like having uh, almost next to no oil in your car, fellas. Okay, <laughs> in your car, <laughs> you might drive your car with no oil. <laughs> drive your car with no low radiator fluid. 
Yeah, that's what you're doing. That's literally what you're doing to your body when you don't have enough water and when you don't have enough oil in there. You're breaking it down. Really, that's this. That's what happens. And I'm, you know, thank God that, you know, you really you're actually okay. You came off for of doing that. You know, you really came off pretty good. You really came off pretty good. So you learned about the dit dial stuff and also hopefully for about the tendons and ligaments and stuff from Rick. And what did you learn from the last one, Michael? About the herbs and stuff. He teaches herbs and stuff for it. Do we still have Fred on the line? And then, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Um, and I think what I also learned about um, with the, the Tai Chi is about, you know, focusing on, you know, your middle. And that's going to help your center and learning how to get hit. Because a lot of times as running backs and receivers, we don't know how to get hit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Because we are taught to absorb. Okay. All right. We're going to have to say all this over again. We have to make sure we get a strong connection because I want to make sure nobody gets hurt. Winfrey, can you hear me? Robert, make sure we got a good connection on this. Okay, Fred. Fred. All right, fellas. All right, this is football. When they talk about embracing yourself to take a hit, there's a reason why they say that. Am I right? Hello? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So this is football. He went for it. I hope he doesn't got the top. He doesn't got the thing that he keep himself completely relaxed when he takes a hit. Is anybody? Did I, did yeah. I lose you guys? Yes, okay. you did. Uh, Rick, <laughs> uh, you saying he needs to stay totally relaxed when he, uh, anyone. Is anybody agreeing about staying totally relaxed when you're hit? No, not totally. You got you to gotta maintain the frame of your body, but you got to be able to uh, uh, bend with mm -hmm. the hit. Mm -hmm. Okay, Thank you. that makes sense. Yeah. All right, okay. all right, all right. And you agree with that, right, Michael? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You stated that. And correctly. Yachty, you too, right? As far as I know, I'm not a football. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I know. That's why I'm here. All right, Fred, let me let me go ahead and I'll give you a, gr a better metaphor for that. You know what a bamboo rod is, right, or a bamboo stick is? Right, we use them all the time in football. Good. So, you know, when you hit it, it, it it's not rigid. It just bends, it bends with it, right? Correct. Same concept. That's how relaxed you should be, all right? <laughs> I don't okay. want you to feel like that's when you when you take a hit you just, you don't want to be st completely solid because if you do you break you want to be exactly like the bamboo stick when you're taking that hit okay you're okay. taking a hit you're just going with it that's all you're not being completely rigid where where you're absorbing the hit you're just going right along with it okay okay that's all you're doing and you're keeping yourself tense and everything just like a cat. You no matter how hard you try to kick, no matter how hard you try to hit a cat, the cat's <laughs> gonna go with it, right? That's correct. It's relaxed, but at the same time, it's tense. You ever try to punch a cat? You can't do it. Okay, <laughs> the thing goes right with you. Be right on your foot like a rug, but at the same time, yeah, it's in perfect control. Okay, it's relaxed at the same time, it's tense, so it can still get up and spring off your hand, although it looks like it's hanging like a rug on you. Okay. You get that I'm idea? Gonna try, I'm gonna, yeah, I, I've got to try and punch a cat. You something. know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that cat yeah. will go right yeah. along with you. <laughs> because, I, because I have to see if this myth is true. You know? You know? You know? Yeah. You just go what you call for cat. That cat will sink that sink that sink right in with that punch. Not saying that it won't hurt, but it won't hurt as much as it would. <laughs> it won't get hurt as much as it would. That's the same thing when they say that the cat always lands on his feet and everything. Because it's learned how to take it's learned how to take the point it learned how to take the force and everything and properly redistribute it and everything. But you just learning Tai Chi is gonna teach you how to do it, Fred, so you don't got to worry about that. Do you have any more questions for the panel, Fred? Because I'm about to wrap this up. Um, not this time, no, I don't. Okay, super. Now, uh, of course everyone who's still watching this video again, we got Yadi Allman from Yadi Allman. He's gonna teach you how to get rid of uh, if you go to him, he'll teach you how to get rid of scar tissue. Also a very interesting thing about uh Yadi Allman who teaches Tibetan uh, medical qigong. 
He teaches you how to increase the amount of energy that's in your body as well to keep you well and at the same time to uh, enhance the uh, inner, the enhance your throws, whatever you like to do. Because the more that you increase your internal energy, the better. A lot of you out there don't have techniques designed in, cor in, cor in order to increase the amount of life energy in your body. Yadi's going to be teaching you how to do this if you get in contact with him. Why did that chick, um, Rick Panico, Rick Panico actually teaches on guard. He's going to teach you how to develop the tendons and ligaments of the body, also the fascia that goes across the muscles in order to protect yourself from injury. Why did I, che uh, why did I choose Michael? The reason I chose Michael Chitowski is because of his thing about herbs and everything. Herbs in order to develop stress for your mind, uh, for your spirit, mind, and body. How to develop those on a regular basis in order that you can uh, be tougher and handle stress throughout life. Also for the Tai Chi, Tai Chi is also responsible for you to help to integrate all your muscles into one unit so you'd be a better fighting, uh, be a better fighter and also a better athlete. So this is the reason I chose all of us. Now we're going to have Fred Winford with his team or with uh, people from his group. They're going to come over and they're going to put Yachty and Rick to the test. Isn't that right, yes. Fred? Yes, yes. That's what we're going to do. Because I want to know too. <laughs> I want to know too. Is it myth? Fact or myth? Okay. <laughs> And they actually got a game. So I told her, didn't I tell you all yet to be all y'all at the beginning? I was gonna give you a shot, right? There you go, definitely. I told all you, and that includes you too. That includes you too, Michael, because you're gonna be giving up. You're gonna be talking about the different herbs and stuff that they can use to the team, right? Er, a white Michael. Yeah. You gonna yeah, exactly. You're in yeah. this too, Michael. And so they got a. They got till February to make an improvement. To, this really could if it goes well this really this really could change your lives i want y'all to think about this when you meet them so whatever secret formula whatever you got on the back burner whatever this like what well, you tapering it out because when fred uh when uh when fred shines y'all gonna shine okay right, right because you gotta look okay. at this is going toward uh arena football mm -hmm. semi-pro mm -hmm. and I have a lot. I still deal with a lot of people that play with the Ravens and mm -hmm. different um, NFL players that need this. As far as like when they get injuries, as far as the knee injuries, um, torn bicep, torn triceps, things that can help them mm -hmm. to strengthen those muscles to get back into the game instead of you know maybe having to sit out eight months. Maybe they only sitting out six months. Right, and you know, like I said before, these uh, um, Winfred he has his, Winfred Jones has a wish list. He wants y'all to help him to fulfill, and we're going to see if we're going to make 2015 the best year that he ever has. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Super. Yeah. All right. I want all y'all to please hold on after the show so we can go ahead and set up a schedule for when Fred's are actually coming down here to Charlotte. And also uh, when we can set up as far as the, uh, as Michael helping them out with everything they need to do. And my name is Malik L. Train of Health Awareness Talk. We're going to go ahead and end this up. Are you ready, Robert? Okay. All y'all have a wonderful night. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, you so much. All right. My pleasure.